Good afternoon and welcome to Huntington High. Today we are reading selections from Dr. Seuss and this one is one of my favorites. It's Megaliot's Pool. This is a story from 1947 and it's one you might not have heard before. But let's find out what's going on in Megaliot's Pool. I'm going to pull this down. Young man, laughed the farmer, you're such a fool. You'll never catch fish in Megaliot's pool. The pool is too small, and you might as well know it. When people have junk, here's the place that they throw it. You might catch a boot, you might catch a can, you might catch a bottle, but listen, young man. If you sat for 50 years with your worms and your wishes, You'd grow a long beard before you'd catch any fishes. Here is our tiny little Medellion's pool. And you can see there's all sorts of junk. Let's see what we can, what else we can find in Medellion's pool. Hmm, answered Marco. It may be you're right. I've been here for three hours without one single bite. There might be no fish, but then again, because you can never tell what goes on down below. This pool might be bigger than you or I know. This might be a pool like I've read in the books, connected to one of those underground brooks, an underground river that starts here and flows right under the pasture and then, well, who knows? It might go along down where no one can see, right under State Highway 203 right under the wagons, right under the toes of Mr. Umbruso, who's hanging out close. It might keep on flowing, perhaps who can tell, right under the people in Sneedon's hotel, right under the grass where they're playing croquet, then under the mountains and far, far away. Here we can see that underground brook that might lead in McElliot's pool. Just lets you know, you never know what's down below. This might be a river. Now, might it be connecting Megaliot's pool with the sea? There may be some fish that might be swimming towards me. If such a thing could be, they certainly would be. Some very smart fellow might point out the way to the place where I'm fishing, and that's why I say, if I wait long enough, I'm patient and cool. Who knows what I'll catch in Megaliot's pool. I might catch a thin fish. I might catch a short, a stout fish. I might catch a short or a long, long drawn out fish. Any kind, any shape any color or size, that I might catch some fish that would open your eyes. I won't be surprised if a dogfish came, complete with a collar and long floppy ears, woofing along, and perhaps he might chase a whole lot of catfish straight into this place. I might catch a fish with a pinwheel-like tail. I might catch a fish who has fins like a sail. I might catch some young fish, those high jumping friskers. I might catch an old one with long flowing whiskers. I might catch a fish with a long curling nose. I might catch a fish like a rooster that crows. I might catch a fish with a checkerboard belly or even a fish made of strawberry jelly. I might catch a seahorse. Now, might not now? I might catch a fish who's partly a cow. Some fish from the tropics all sunburned and hot might decide to swim up. Well, they might, might they not? Racing up north for a chance to get cool, full steam ahead from a galleot's pool. Some Eskimo fish from way beyond Hudson Bay. They might decide to swim down. They might be headed this way. It's a pretty long trip, but they might and they may. I might catch 
watch an eel? Well, I might. It depends. A long twisting eel with a lot of strange fins. And oddly enough, with a head on both ends. I might catch a fish with a terrible grouch. Or an Australian fish with a kangaroo's pouch. Who wants to catch small ones like mackerel or trout? Say, I'll catch a sawfish with such a long snout that he needs an assistant to help him out. If I wait long enough, I'm, if I'm patient and cool, who knows what I'll catch in McElliot's pool. Some rough-neck old lobster, all gristle and muscle, might grab at my bait, then we'd have a tussle. To land one so tough might take two or three hours. But the next one might be easy, like the kind who likes flowers. Okay. I might catch some sort of fast moving bloke who zips over the waves with an overarm stroke. I might and I may, that's really no joke. A fish even faster? A fish, if you please, who slides down the sides on strange islands on skis. He might ski over and pay me a visit. It's not impossible, really, now is it? Some circus fish, fish from an acrobat school, might stage a big show in McElliot's pool. Or I might catch a fish from a stranger place yet from the world's highest river and far off to pet, where, where the falls are so steep that it's dangerous to ride them, so the fish put up shoots and they float down beside them. From the world's deepest ocean, from way down below, from down in the mud where the deep divers go, from down in the mire and the muck and the murk, I might catch some fish or I'll go gork, gork, gork. Whales! I'll catch whales. Yes, a whole herd of whales. Have you ever heard of whales? All spouting their spouts and thrashing their tails. I'll catch 50 whales. Then I'll stop for the day. Because there's nothing bigger than whales, they say. Still, of course, it might be that there is something bigger. Some sort of thing on the chipper. A fish that's so big, if you know what I mean, that he makes a whale look like a tiny sardine. Oh, the sea is so full of a number of fish, and if a fellow is patient, he might get his wish. Look at all this fish we've got there. I think he's told us about every kind. Like, see, there's a stout fish and a long fish skinny fish and big ones. We've got all kinds of fish here. They might go up in McElligot's pool. And that's why I think I'm not such a fool when I sit here and fish in McElligot's pool.